This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. We've mentioned the personal allowance a lot today um, in this in this lecture. Um, we know it's a tax-free income available to UK taxpayers, and that we take it out of non-savings income first. We also know that is how much it is. And where is it? It's in the rates. And what do you always do? You always check. Now, the personal allowance um, and the rates of tax, when they have a budget every year in the UK um, to reintroduce tax, um, those two items, the personal allowance and the basic rate of income tax, are the one things that are, um, it would be political suicide probably to amend those two. They are the headline items of tax. Everybody knows how much tax they have to pay at a basic rate um, and everybody has is aware that they have um, a tax-free allowance. So in order to raise more tax without raising the basic rate of tax, which is 20%, or dealing with um, any headline issues, um, they have to have special measures. And one of this, one of the ways they've done this in the last couple of years is to reduce that £12,570, that personal allowance, to reduce it down where your income exceeds £100,000. So it only hits high rate taxpayers, people who are almost additional rate taxpayers. And this paragraph, it says here, this gradually reduces to nil where a person's adjusted net income exceeds £100,000. Now, how do we get to adjusted net income? It tells us here. It's the total income, which we worked out in the computation, less deductions for a gross pension contributions, loss relief, or deductible interest payments. Now, the ones you're most likely to come across is the pension one. Um, so all of these various different things, this one here, personal pension contributions, gift aid payments, um, gift aid. Gift aid is a way of making a donation to a charity um, and getting the tax paid to the charity on your behalf from the revenue. Talk about that more later. So this is kind of how it works. It's an additional thing. We're going to do some maths on it because once you see the numbers, you'll find it's, it's much easier to, uh, um, to deal with. So it is reduced oops, it is reduced by one pound for every two pounds by which a person's adjusted net income exceeds a hundred thousand pounds. So a person with an adjusted net income of 125,140 or more is not entitled to any personal allowance. All right, so it's bit by bit by bit. So what we're going to do is we're going to have a look at examples. There are three of them here, which will help you to understand this rule. OK, so for every one pound, it, sorry, it's reduced by one pound for every two pounds of your ANI, your adjusted net income, where that exceeds £100,000. All right. So we're just going to have a look at this so you'll be able to see, as I say, once we've got some numbers in it it makes it easier to understand. So Mike received gross employment income of 108,000, so he's a high rate taxpayer, of which 32,000 was deducted at source through pay as you earn. Okay, so that's his income, that's the pay as you earn. So let's have a look at how that looks in a computation. We only need one column because he's only got one source of income, which is non-savings income. So again, Labels, 
headings headings across the top pro forma down the side copy the question into the answer the question said that he had employment income of 108000 pounds now when you get to the personal allowance and you know that it's over £100,000, you have to leave a gap and do and do a working. If you see how there I've written the little W1, okay? Because if you look further down on that answer, you will find working number one. Now, students differ in the way that they approach these. I personally prefer it if you write the pro forma out copy the question, leave the gaps, then you leave a gap for your income tax calculation and do the workings at the bottom. Very clearly labelled working one. Now in this situation there is only one working, but you can have a question where there are one to three workings. Label them carefully so that the examiner can see them because this is a model answer that we have in front of us here. This is the model answer that the examiner would have if he was marking your answer. So make it look like it. Okay. So this is the personal allowance, 12,570. And what they've done is they've divided. So we have, that's the income, his adjusted net income. That's the, lim the lower limit. Okay. And it's divided by two which equals 4,000. That is then deducted from personal allowance in order to give a revised or reduced personal allowance. So if we go back up to the question there, there's the, the employment income from the question. There's the revised personal allowance with a clear label, working number one, giving us taxable income. It's high rate taxpayer. Underline the pro forma, finish it off. Separate pro forma for the income tax computation. Non savings is taxed first, then the savings, then the dividend income. So the non savings income, again, make sure, just check two, two seconds, go to your rates, check that you've got that basic rate balance where the figure is. Correct. 37,700 at 20%. 7,540 pounds. This is the total income. So that there is a balancing figure of 61,730. Use your safety net. Okay. That's taxed at 40%, giving us a liability of 32,232. Now, we are doing example number eight, got it right this time. Pay as you earn of 32,000. Don't forget now, that 32,000 is tax that has already been paid. It's tax, it's not a deduction from the salary in that sense. A salary is put in gross, you work out the tax, you take off the tax that has been paid already to the, to the revenue which means that he's only got £232 left to pay. And he'll get a bill for that. Okay. Example number nine. Ken. Trading income. So he's self-employed. So that's his non-savings income. And then he's got savings income. Ooh, and he's got dividend income. So we're going to bring several sets of, of uh, rules into this uh, into this question. So let's have a look at how that looks in the answers. Example number nine. And repeat labels. Headings, headings across the top, 
Now we've got all four columns here because he's got these three different types of income. He's got non-savings income from trade, tick. Savings income from the bank, tick. Dividend income from his shares, each one goes in its own column, all added up at the total at the end. Now, look at his total income. It's way over the 100,000. This man is an additional rate taxpayer. He's an additional rate taxpayer. And obviously, again, we have a working situation. Now, it's obvious from this that he is not entitled to any personal allowance. He's way over the limit. He's an additional rate taxpayer. Please, as I said before, do not ignore the fact that he's a person. Now, you've got two options. You can either show all the maths or you can write a sentence underneath. This individual um, is not entitled to a personal allowance and explain why or you can just show the maths. Do not simply leave it out. You must write in that the personal allowance is deductible at this point. Write nil and then either show the workings to prove your rule or a sentence that goes with it. So in this case, they've done a little working. Okay, you've got the normal personal allowance. That's the total ANI. That's the lower limit. Divided it by two, 53,000. Clearly not entitled to any, um, any allowance. So as a result, we've got 130,000 of um, non-savings income to tax first, then the savings income second, then the dividend income third, and then we will deduct the pay as you earn from that because it's tax paid at source. You can see clearly there they are. And it's lab nicely labelled, set out. By doing that, you prove to the examiner, you know that they're done in that, or that's the rule. You've proved that rule by writing it out like that. Nice and neat. The, the examiner will be very happy to see that you've done, um, you've done all of that. 37,700 is at 20%. £7,540. Then we are into, so that's basic rate. Then we are into high rate. Okay. 92,300. That is a total of 130,000 that we've got there. So that's 130,000. Let me just write that in there. So that's the total of the non-savings income. That's taxed at 40%, which is 36,970. Now, at the point at which additional rate kicks in is 150,000. So 20,000 of the savings income is at 40% and the balance, the other uh, 20,000 is going to be taxed at 45%. No nil rate bans because he's an additional rate taxpayer uh, for savings. However, dividends, you notice, see, remember that rule? 2,000, it doesn't matter that he's additional rate, he still gets that. So 2,000 is at nil percent. And then the balance. Now, I mentioned to you earlier, those numbers are difficult to remember. 20, 40, 45, you'll probably remember. Only need to just check them very quickly. But that one you'll need to check. In the rates make sure you've got it right figure giving a total liability of 74,839 that's quite a complex little question so as I've said before go back do it yourself again read through it make sure you're aware of how it all works example number 10 James has a trading income um, self-employed of 102 and bank interest of four so let's have a look at James's situation in example number 10. So we've got a heading. We've got labels. We have a pro forma. We have trading income. 
we have bank interest. A working, because his total income is over 100,000. Let's have a look at that working. This is a repeat of what we got before. So 106 less the lower limit divided by 2 is 3. 3,000 is taken off the personal allowance, giving you a revised personal allowance of 9,570, which goes into your computation, deducting it from the non-savings income. That is then underlined, finished. That's part one of all the, uh, the computation. We now need to work out the tax. Non-savings first, savings second. So basic rate, 37,720%. Then he kicks into high rate. So he's not additional rate, high rate. 54,730, which comes to 92,530 in total. So we make sure that agrees with that. Savings income is high rate. So it's the high rate savings nil rate band of only 500 at 0%. The balance of the savings income of four, so that comes to four. Check that's correct. Always double your maths, giving a total liability of 30,832. So all those examples will help us to see what happens when we have to reduce that um, rate band down, that personal allowance, sorry, that personal allowance um, down as much as possible. Now, part of this personal allowance you can transfer it's called the marriage tax allowance or the marriage allowance and you can transfer 1260 of it to your spouse or civil partner that's the amount set now again it's in the rates all you have to do is remember the rule but the figures are in the rates okay it is an election so you have to make an election you have to apply to the revenue and say this is what we want to do um, with this um, part of the uh, the allowance and it says here it's only available to basic rate taxpayers and non-taxpayers um, is likely to be made when one spouse is a non-taxpayer and has an amount of unused personal allowance that would otherwise be wasted and the other one is a basic rate taxpayer. Um, it's a help because that year, some years ago, I don't know how many now, probably 10, um, there was a marriage allowance. If you were married, you could have uh, an additional tax allowance and that was removed several years ago. So this is a way of um, helping taxpayers on low income um, to pay a little bit less tax than they would do normally. Now, it does not it does not it does not increase the personal allowance of the other person it's what it's called a tax credit so you work out the tax and then you're given credit for 1260 pounds at 20 percent so you get your tax bill reduced by 252 pounds now it can't it reduces your tax liability it can never create a repayment of tax Okay, and we'll see that um, as we go through the example, which is example um, number 11 that we have here. David and Victoria are married. David has trading income of 10,000. And so David is the one who's got spare personal allowances because he's not used it all, has he? So if he'd got 10,000 pounds worth of income, and a personal allowance of 12,570. He doesn't pay any tax, but he hasn't used all his personal allowance. Whereas Victoria's, the, she's got income of 30,500. Okay, so let's have a look at how that looks. 
and we look at our model answer here. Okay, so I just did a little calculation there. You saw that. That's his income. That would be his allowance. Pays no tax. Got spare allowances. But what we've done is we've transferred and elected to transfer part of that allowance, the 1,260 to Victoria. Now it's not an allowance, it's a tax credit, but it comes off his allowance. So you notice there, now, if this happens, make sure you show this. Show this calculation. Either in a working or like it is in this model answer. OK, so even with a reduced personal allowance, he's still not paying any tax. So he's not losing out, but she's benefiting. So the question said that her allowance was 30,000 from the question. She's getting a full personal allowance because she's a basic rate taxpayer. Not over the limit. There are a lot of rules to bring into mind. And the more you read through this chapter, the more you'll get them into your head. Now, her tax calculation, non-savings income, 20%. Then, see here, personal allowance tax reduction. It's a tax credit. £1,260 at 20%, £252, knocked off her tax bill as a result of that transfer, so that she then only pays £3,334 tax. So it's a useful election to make, a very useful election to make. Just a few more things that we need to look at. Um, deduction from total income. Um, Earlier on in the main pro forma, which was at the beginning of the chapter, um, we looked at what you could have as a relief against your income. Um, the only ones that you will have to deal with in the TX exam are the qualifying interest and certain losses. Now, losses we'll deal with later. Don't worry about losses at this stage. Um, we will deal with them later. But qualifying interest, these are the... Um, areas that you will get. Now it will very clearly say that it is qualifying interest. You won't have to decide whether it is qualifying interest or not. It will clearly say that it is. So you just have to put it in the correct place. So it's uh, buying an interest in a partnership or contributing to partnership capital or loan. Um, buying plant and machinery used in a business if you're a partnership or an individual. Um, a loan to, to buy plant and machinery by an employee, very rare that one is. Um, but if you look at the pro forma, you'll see those. So this one, that's rare. Um, that one occasionally, the that might be. But it will clearly say that in your question. That it, and you'll recognise it. So example number 12 here. Cathy has trading income of 52,000, paid a thousand pound interest to purchase plant and machinery used in her business as a partnership. Those are the alert questions. You know that you've got those um, correct there for. So let's look at her answer and see. Okay, only one source of income, only need one column. Trading income from the question of 52,000. You see there that the loss the, sorry, the le the reliefs, the qualifying interest goes in before. So it's before that goes in first. And then you take the personal allowance off as in the pro forma. So the main pro forma, which we looked at, you'll find that um, in, the, in the same place. Then we work out her tax. She's a high rate taxpayer, so the basic rate, the 20% high rate, there's your safety net. That agrees with that. And her liability is uh, £7,832.